out of the box Curira comes with very many rules by default and also in the app exchange there are very many more that you can add but what if you want to create a rule on something that Curira doesn't do and this is what this video is all about I'm going to show you from beginning to end how you create custom rules and how you debug them when things do not fire when they when we think that they should be in this particular case for Windows event logs uh, because I encountered a mystery that uh, may hit you as well so what I have in this uh, directory are two logs we can even cut the first one and this is a log that fires in Windows event security logs when a member is added to a security enabled global group as we are seeing in there okay so I want to the objective number one is create a rule that will fire an offense every time that this event happens how do I do that from the very beginning well the first thing that you need to do is you need to replay this log into your curator system so you got this log you copy it from whatever you got them, uh, and, and you are going to be replaying this in Curator. And to do that, first of all, let me show you, I have my log activity tab with a single filter. that says only show me the Windows security event logs. And I have this in real time, right? Ready to fire as soon as uh, that gets uh, sent. And to replay this log in the simplest way, you replay the log run command that's the path with that uh, what it is and you specify the file with this is with this that file there and one event per second you hit enter and immediately you get that event in here but you need to for well first of all the, you need to have the dsm installed and all that good stuff and for windows i'm pretty sure that you have it already and i'm going to pause the the real time to get more details about that event right notice how, how the event has been nicely parsed because I have that DSM assigned all these things were extracted from the actual payload of the message that is down here you will see later that that this thing that that the source and destination IP is localhost 127.0.0.1 because I replay this with ink this did not come from Active Directory or from a Windows workstation uh, it, it came straight from the replay of the log and that's what that thing is there and that is something th that, that can become mysterious and we'll see it in the next rule that we will create so objective number one create a rule that fires when this event happens how do I do that hmm well, the first thing that I need to do is, or the easiest way of actually identifying this event is by its category. And we, we can see that by just clicking here on map event and immediately the system say, well, when, when the, whoever the developer did this, it assigned it to a high level category with the DSM editor with authentication and the low level category is a group member added. That's all you need okay now let's go ahead and create the the rule and I'm gonna use the all interface instead of using the nice UI for looking at the offenses or the use case manager in case that some people do not have those nice uh, uh, applications uh, added so as you can see I clear all my offenses I don't have anyone if I click here on the rules you get to this particular page where the rules are again this is the old interface it can be slow and not as nice as the new one but this is in on every system I'm going to create a new event rule and I get the traditional wizard that walks me by the hand this is on events only because these are Windows events and the so I'm going to first put the name and I'm going to call member add it to security group I probably should be more specific and put here Windows security group right that's the title of my of my uh, rule and the first test condition here all the test conditions that there are gazillions of them but this is easy the first thing that I need to do is that well I don't want to waste cycles on evaluating this rule unless these are Windows events right 
So the first thing that I do here is I type log, and when this log source type uh, is, and I select here Windows. If I type here Windows, and this is what this is all, uh, Windows Event Security Log, I click Add, I click Submit, and I have the first test condition. So when this condition is true, it's like when I get any Windows Security event, uh, uh, what I want to make sure is that it belongs to the categories we just saw before. Well, what I need to do is here for looking at the test condition is type the word category and uh, this is the test condition that I want and how do I put the categories we saw? Well, we go here and remember that the first the high level category was authentication and the low level category was group member added. Yeah, this is the one, right? So we click here Add, we click Submit, and our rule is almost ready, but we want it to fire an offense. So we need to check this checkbox in here. And we want to group all these events that comes in this offense, not by source IP, but let's say that we want username. That's the one. So Anything that comes on the same username, boom, is going to be added to the single offense. And we need to make sure that this thing is, is enabled. That's all we need to do. So we save that rule. And to test that out, we're going to just do the same thing. We're going to go here into the log activity tab. We're going to return to the events. We're going to put this in real time. And we're going to rerun that. event using the log run command. So we get that here, we pause it to see in it and when we click in here what is different this time is that if we go down here on the custom rules we're gonna be seeing that we got that rule that we just created member added to a Windows group okay so it works and these other rules also match this particular event but the one that we are interested in here is that one in particular if we go to the offenses tab we see that we got our offenses fired nothing difficult no mystery but let's actually continue to show you how you debug these things because when we basically want to do the next step which is when this event fires let's actually clear the screen and do the that event when a, an account a user account is created we want to fire another rule and we're going to see that that's going to fail and the, the reason is very interesting so we are going to save some time here and we're going to duplicate that rule and we're going to change to a different category that this one is. Well, but we don't know what category this is. So what we are going to be doing is that we go back to the log activity tab. We are going to uh, return to my event list. We're going to play this uh, in real time and we're going to Re, uh, use the log run command that we used before but in this instead of using member added we're going to use the user account created one event per second hit enter we go here and we got this new event pretty good notice again the source IP and destination IP are local hosts and that's going to bite us uh, when we try to do the actual rule so we pause here as we did before we need to click on the details of the event and click here on mapped event to see the actual category because that's the simplest way you can actually get test condition on any of these consoles property but that will be a little bit more advanced and, and no need to this is the easiest way so notice that in this particular case is the same authentication but the low level category is user account added right let's remember that Now, in order to make this simpler, we are going to duplicate the rule that we have. 
and we're going to be uh, calling it Windows User Account Added, right? We are in here where we had our rules and we're going to take here in action and we're going to say duplicate. We're going to save some time here. What name are we going to be given to it? So let's put this Windows user account added and hit enter. So notice that when we refresh the screen and we sort this by date, we get the actual uh, new rule here but notice something I just caught which is that rule was not enabled when you duplicate the rule notice that uh, we need to modify this uh, test condition in here and we need to make sure that we remember let's actually do it so we don't forget we're going to index also by username but let's make sure that we click this thing here Let's go back to the test condition. This is not the test condition that we want, so we're going to delete that one. We're going to click here again, category, and that's the test condition. So we click here on the plus sign, and the category is authentication. But the low level category was user account added. So we scroll down here user account added. We add, submit, boom, we are done. Now, we, we are done with this, we can click here finish, but we're going to see that when I replay that log again, as we did before, this time is going to fail. So let's go back to the event list, let's actually back to the real time let's replay the event as before and while we get the event if we pause again and we go here well first of all we'll see that we don't we don't ever get the offense I can show you that in a minute but when we look at when I was debugging this and I look at the rule remember that we have a bunch of rules in here this is the mystery. Now I don't have all those rules and notice none is the rule that we just created. And how come the, 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 everything is the same? The mystery here has to do, and this is what my friend Mutas caught in a second when he saw this, is that there's this false positive rule that is being added here that intercepted this thing. Let's actually click on this rule and see why is it that it, it broke this second attempt, but not the first one. Well, here's the key. Notice that the first test condition is the entire 127 uh, address space. So 127.0.0.0.1 matches here. So this first test condition is true. The category is authentication and not, that's the exception, when a member is added. When a member is created, it's not in this condition. And that's when that's why this this rule is actually intercepting what we are doing and making us fail. Uh, this is something that apparently when Mutas told me that this was created was apparently years ago in order to avoid double counting when the event comes from Active Directory and when the event comes from the actual workstation from the Windows logs. I will probably disable this rule because uh, it, it, at least it, it make me waste a little bit of time but there might be a good reason why the developers put put this one in there but how do we fix that problem without messing with this uh, with this rule well and the problem has to do as, as I mentioned before with the fact that the source and, and destination IP is localhost and that's because I'm not using the log run command appropriately and notice that when I refresh here on the offenses, I never get to see that offense. And, and it's true because we didn't even see it in, that, that the rule actually match. So the problem is that the way that I should have run that command is actually using a log run. For example, if I use log run without putting a command, the help tells me 
that there is this dash U option that you can spoof the sender. I did not use that, and that's what this assume localhost. So if I were to run this with the dash U, and I will put the, and this is important, the IP address of my Windows Active Directory, which I have uh, one log source defined for it, otherwise this is not gonna, gonna work. 16.60.130, uh, .60 which is my Active Directory in this system. So I'm going to spoof that address, making it look like if it will be coming from it. And I'm going to replay just one event per second. Let me make sure I have the the log activity tab ready for these. Let's go back to real time. And let's now replay that and see what we get. Now we get, notice that it's now saying that this is coming from source and destination IP is not localhost. So that intercepting rule that we saw before, it's not going to hit us now. So when we pause this to look at the actual event, we see that now, because of the, the way that we run it, notice that we have the Active Directory ID, we don't have the local host anymore. Notice that we, we don't get beaten by that <laughs> rule as before, and we actually get two uh, rules that fire. This is actually, th there is a default rule in QReader, uh, that is this one. Uh, I did not uh, create that one. Notice that it's ex very similar and, and it actually fired. And this adds stuff into a reference set. So that's a standard curator rule, right? Uh, but the one that we created, it is uh, the one above and this actually work well. So I hope that this shows you a couple of things regarding how you create rules, how you debug rules, particularly with Windows uh, looks at that mystery that hit me does not hit you. And one final thing while well, in the topic of debugging, uh, sometimes it might be useful when you are looking at the, uh, at the actual logs uh, that you may want to use a filter that I'm going to add it here. It's called associated with offense equals true. And I'm going to remove the first filter if I wanted to. I no need to, but this is actually a more selective one, so I'm going to take it out. So uh, show me in the last uh, five minutes which are the events that uh, match and uh, are associated with, it, with, a, with an offense and we actually see that event we just run. My apologies for making the video so long, but I hope that this helps you as, as I spend quite some time figuring out this mystery and why this is that rule was not uh, working for me.